Now we get to the Scandinavian and wrong slide. Now we get to the Scandinavian invasion, the Vikings. Now the Vikings were people from the Scandinavian countries, primarily from Norway, Sweden, a little bit in Finland, a little bit in Denmark. And the reason they're going to go out raiding is not so much to raid. That's what we tend to associate with them. But in fact, a lot of their missions are trade missions because their homelands are lousy agricultural areas. So they almost entirely rely on trade. Uh, also, when you hear about the Normans, they are effectively Viking rather than being French. That's a little bit of a different story. So Viking is actually a verb. Uh, it's something that these people do. They would have seen themselves as Scandinavians. And they would raid and pillage basically every time they just couldn't get a good trade mission going. They would uh, raid and pillage if they had no other uh, form of sustenance. You don't want to go out raiding and pillaging or relying on it all the time because it is a very high-risk endeavor. And they're going to travel throughout Europe. We're going to see them come down as far as Constantinople. There are actually writings in Islam that tell us about Viking burials. That's where we find out about them. And we're finding out that from the Black Sea. So they're covering a considerable area. Of course, we have... Uh, Eric the Red, who discovers Greenland. We have Leif Erikson in North America. We have the discovery of Iceland. Uh, they will travel all the way to Italy and elsewhere. And they aren't necessarily raiding all the time. As I said, a lot of these are trade missions, and then they, tra they raid when necessary. This pillaging would allow their society to continue. And their ships are what does it for them. These ships are remarkable vessels, uh, great seagoing vessels with these large rectangular sails. And just having a ship isn't good enough. Of course, we're in the north where you don't have the sun for navigation for a considerable time of the year. So they have one other trick up their sleeve. They have something called the Viking sunstone. It's actually calcite. And what it does is it actually polarizes the light so they can find the sun, find where the sun is in the sky and continue to navigate even in rough weather as long as it's daylight. And at night, they need to rely on being able to see the stars. This ability to navigate long distances sets them apart. And the Vikings will eventually disappear because all of those areas that they traded with and raided and pillaged, they would go there because they had resources. So the Vikings would integrate themselves into those societies. Uh, a great deal of the English population will be uh, of, of Viking heritage, as well as most of northern France, parts of Italy, southern Italy, uh, specifically areas around the Black Sea, etc. So they really don't suddenly disappear. They simply don't come back home. And it makes a lot of sense because why come home to a rocky, cold environment when there's good agricultural land to be had elsewhere? Or they move to Minnesota. So let's talk about the Usberg ship. This is discovered near Oslo in 1904, and this is a Viking vessel carved out of oak. And in this case, it was likely ceremonial rather than being used for raiding. In fact, we believe that it's for a burial. Uh, and here we see another version of the Usberg ship, or another uh, image of it. The bow and stern are elaborately carved with interlace forms and wild beasts. And we also see grave goods. Uh, here it is at when it was buried uh, as they're excavating it. The interesting thing is... We find people and animals, which is not that remarkable in Viking society. Oftentimes, they would poison people close to the person being buried, and they would be buried with this person. But we have one woman on the ship who's a good deal older than anyone else, and this likely indicates the burial of a queen or priestess, indicating a great equality in Viking society, 
with women. So it's sometimes interesting which societies give women a fair element of equality and which do not. Now, from the ship, we have the animal head post. And this is wood carving mixed with metalwork. It's basically the spirit of the ship. And the importance here is that you tend to see a lot of superstition amongst sailors. The reason being the weather on the seas can change for no apparent reason. You have rogue waves and other natural phenomena that are terrifying and completely unpredictable. So oftentimes they will attribute a spirit to the ship or they're attributing elements of a god to the ship to find favor. But it all kind of boils back to superstition. And this post is not a massive thing. It wasn't meant to terrify people. It's actually quite small. It's measured in inches. When we look at it, you'll notice the Celtic network, especially on the sides, stands out. And that indicates to us that there's not only cult, uh, material trade and looting and plundering in Ireland, but we also see cultural trade, cultural hybridization between the Vikings and the Celts, uh, which is very important to keep in mind. Those Celtic ideas will spread around Europe. Uh, it will die out over time, uh, much like Viking society, but they will spread uh, at various times through Europe. Now, the Vikings also, as I said, are famous for raiding the Irish monasteries, which would give, uh, bring a downfall to that Irish literary tradition, uh, that tradition of the monks sitting alone copying books and saving them for Western civilization. But by the time the Vikings show up to do that, the Irish have already passed a lot of those books into Europe ahead of the Vikings, and so not all of them will be destroyed. Others are moved for safekeeping, which means we need to move to Europe. 